she had cane shears for her. Get those jew claws I'm digging into my neck. <laughs> They're not that bad, unfortunately. I know one one broke <laughs> off, but one was hectic sharp. <laughs> oh no, that one's not. Have you already done that one? Yeah, but because they were maybe she's worn them down a bit, but they were like needles. I think I think it's the fact that she just um, claws into you. I was going to say it's, it's the pressure probably that they not that. It. Yeah, it's probably it, maybe not. Maxine saying it may just continue. <laughs> it's not going to make much no, of a difference. They're definitely a lot more blunt than what they were. She just needs to run on the. Yeah. Even a bit more. <laughs> oh. Thanks, Maxine. Oh, Watch out, Miss Fono. Oh, shoot. Gee. There's always a dog at your feet, isn't there? <laughs> so, Cute next boy. is Rover is Boy. <laughs> Cutie pie. She must have really enjoyed it. Rover! Last time. He's like the only one not here. Yeah. Is he, is he eating he, his he, dinner? He just ate. No, he just ate. Breakfast? I love the way he's hiding. Rover! Who? Oh, yeah. It's... Oh, there he is. He's he usually one. hides in the yeah, cupboard. Hi. He's gone for one because that gate's open. Oh, okay. He's just gone for a bush walk. Good boy, buddy! Good boy. It's, it's you, mate. It's you. You're up. Come on, buddy. Come on, Rover. Come on, mate. Up again. Good boy. Good boy. Was Lily a bit better behaved this time, she Maxine? Was. She was very well behaved. Oh, that's she awesome. Did. Yeah. She only started screaming when she saw me. <laughs> in the bath, she was very well behaved. Well, that's good. You look amazing, Lily. She does. I love the bandanas. They're so cool. Very different to her mum, isn't she? Oh, like, yeah. That is like, ugly, lovely. Yeah. It's so old, the age that they start primary school in Australia. Yeah, my father's niece is the same. I had only just turned four when I...
the ch chance is um, going to his forever home this week. Oh my god. <laughs> the original person. Um, so, the original person um, pulled out. Oh, okay. So, he did have a backup. Yep. Um, and the backup was just as wonderful. Yeah. Um, so, it's not like it's a consolation prize or anything yeah. like that um and we we're big believers in that you know things are meant to be and it all yeah. works out so i feel like maybe this was all how it was always meant to turn out for chance um so he is being adopted by um one of the other farm dogs that got adopted um and this was his first best friend at the farm. Cute. So it's pretty exciting. Um, Luke's driving up to Queensland this week oh to God. take him to his home. A long way away. It is, yeah. But he's going to have a farm of his own. Oh, wow. Yeah. Good life. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That water was like closets. So much to me. Good in that colour, Maxine, doesn't she? Does, hey. <laughs> Hello, darling. How are you, buddy boy? <laughs> Hello, buddy boy. How are you, bud? Yo, beautiful little chinky boy. And your beautiful little chinky boy. absolutely no idea how he's going to go with the um, drier um, Maxine so okay. that might be where um, I might even get Luke to come back and just um, maybe do the first dry like you know just to see yeah is he a bit dodgy with sounds uh, he's 
he oh, is life. yeah he came here and um he showed some really strange behaviors yeah um, looking up at the spy and stuff yeah that yeah. and also like you know barking and staring into corners and oh. um just crevices and stra strange things so uh, he's decompressed a lot, you know, yeah. in the last like four weeks or however long he's been here. Yeah. But, um, good boy, buddy. Oh, he's very friendly. He is. Very friendly. He's a really, um, he's really sweet, uh, to, to humans. Yeah. And not that he's, he's not that way to dogs but he is like real typical working breed behavior yeah, so, so yeah. he came here and all he was interested in the birds so he didn't have anything to do with the dogs but then yeah. as he's decompressed he wants to join in more okay. but then he's just doing real stereotypical unsocialized working dog behavior like hurting and nipping yeah. so we're just trying to guide him with that you know and give him lots of um, socialization so that that becomes more you know minimal and it is but he still he still has it and his odd behaviors seem to be less and less okay. what a good boy diesel well done. Oh, I know. Everywhere. don't let the phone touch me <laughs> the floor is lava <laughs> Well, he's so sweet. He's trying very hard. We um, we've just been giving him a lot of time and space. Yeah. Because when he came here, he was just so. Yeah. Um, but there was no room at the shelter and he had an attack incident on his file so yeah, yeah. he had to come here or else um, he would have been put to sleep so so we do feel like um, we've been doing like medical tests like you know blood tests yeah. and um, various things just to make sure that there's nothing underlying you know for his strange behaviors yeah um, but it does look like it might have been a coping mechanism because he was um, like pent up in a very small enclosure mm. um, and being a working dog I think it, you know sent him a bit crazy and He's just done those odd behaviours to deal with his pooey life. Yeah. And then he's come here and he's been given the freedom and it seems to be letting, he's letting it go. Yeah. But we haven't got the full test back yet, so... Oh, it's all right, mate. So we don't know 100% yet just if there is any underlying things. But we should know this week. Okay. Be interesting. Yeah. Because the vet um, said that he did have, in his first blood test, he had a spike in his liver enzymes, which can be what they suspected that he had um, maybe a small liver shunt, which can, um, you know, give them those strange behaviours. Okay. So we just need to make sure it's not that, because that, um, that, that could explain why he is the way he is. Hello, Look at you, you're so shiny. We've done a DNA test. Yeah. Um, we haven't got the results oh, back. Okay. 
but um, I'm gonna say this German Shepherd in Yeah, <laughs> who knows? We're suspecting oh, a, a working breed just yeah. because of his behaviour. It's very, very strong herding instincts. Yeah. Um, but that, you know, goodness, he's a, you know, come from the shelter, so it could be ten different things in there, you know. Crazy sometimes what they come back with. Yes. Yeah. You're like, really? Yeah. Maybe just a border collie. Yes. Maybe <laughs> that's that's what we're thinking. Has that ever happened, Chris? Never. <laughs> First time Hope can't, comes up to Chris for a pat. Good girl, Hope. <laughs> Good girl, Maggie. <laughs> Good girl, Hope. Well done. That's great. Good girl. Good girl. What a good girl you are. So good. So good. So good. Hello, mate. We, we do, it might be fine. Yeah, what do you sure. do with the water? Didn't didn't snap at the water. No. Didn't care about anything. Just wanted to get out the bathtub. Hello, buddy. <laughs> How are you going to go with the blower? You look beautiful, Rosa boy. Beautiful.
Yep. Get the pins out. Get the pins out. Just wait, buddy. Just wait. Shadow. Is when her spidey senses yeah. are triggered and with an anxious dog. Yeah. Ah, ah, ah. It's like my dog. Yeah. You look amazing, Diesel. Look at you. He's such a good looking dog. He is. Isn't he? He's so handsome. He says, now let me at those birds. <laughs> <laughs> Good boy. So you won't see him again now, Maxine. But in a sense, it's a good thing. It's a wonderful thing. It's a great thing. Isn't it, big boy? Me. <laughs> I think it's your turn next week. Good girl, darling. Thank you, Maxine. Oh. He's going to have a YouTube channel. So if you ever want to tune in and. Yeah. Hee <laughs> hee. Isn't it? With your sister, Nevaeh. That'd be amazing. So this one, bone dry. Yep. So that one, I think when we came up here the other day with the bat, releasing the bat, we must have opened it. Ah. Uh. So I just found it was open. Just there. A little bit of water ingress because the door's are open, but no, no real damage. So I'll just quickly dry it up and hopefully uh, no harm done. Bloody oh, so. Need to open the gate for Maxine to leave. I uh, probably just need to check those. Who have we got? Where's Diesel, the main one? Diesel's here. Diesel's here. And then I'm not sure if the front gate's closed or not. I'll have to quickly just peek through the window. And then we'll go for a walk up the bush, eh?
He's like, what? What do you mean? What do you mean? Chancy boy, you finally got a home. Hey, that's exciting, mate. And it's another farm. Yeah, good boy. Good boy, mate. You can oh, go I'm so on excited your adventures. for you. I'm so excited for you. you still go on your big walks. Yeah. Good boy. What a good boy. So we've, we've touched on it and mentioned it a couple of times, but officially, Chance has been adopted and on Wednesday I'll be leaving the farm and taking Chance with me and driving up to Queensland to drop him at his new forever home and I'm very excited for him. It's a, a, a really, it really is a fairy tale ending for Chance's journey. I'm real excited. I've been thinking about it for you know a little while now of how much he's going to love it. Oh boy, yeah, and he also has so who, a who... best friend there. Hey, you don't even know it yet, but you have a best friend there. And you know who that is? Oh, it's Nevaeh's new house as well. So they're going to be they're going to be brother and sister. <laughs> that is cool, hey. Both gone through the journey together. Both made it out at different times. Both ended up in the perfect place. So just a reminder for everybody yep. um, about, you know, Ch Chance and Nevaeh's relationship. Yeah, so uh, when they first came to us, all four of them, Chance, Nevaeh, Roscoe and Molly, they were all very antisocial, very aggressive to all other dogs. And the first connection that I was able to make was with Chance and Nevaeh. Um, it just was a relationship where Sorry. Rusty old wire coming out of the ground. Um, it was a relationship where Chance was still, you know, his antisocial serious self, but Nevaeh was this over the top bouncy hypo that just seemed to win Chance over. And his, you know, original antisocial play where he was real tough and staunch, Nevaeh didn't respect it at all and just was like, yeah, come on, let's play. Forget that attitude. And they just became really good mates uh, very early on, didn't they? They were roommates and they were, uh, it was really fun to see that that was their first real relationship that they had built where... They got excited to see each other. They kept checking in with each other. Um, it was a it was a special thing. So to come this far and not only find an awesome home for Nevaeh, but then you know a few months later, Chance being the dog that he is now, and being able to reunite and live out his days on a farm with Nevaeh is just so special. It's something that. It could just couldn't have worked out any better, could it? No. I'm really, uh, I'm really excited for him. So, um, Nevaeh's mum said that she could come down at Easter to pick him up, but we're just so excited about it and so happy for him that I'm going to drive him up there and, um, you know, do help do the introductions with uh, Nevaeh's other little puppy friends, uh, puppy brother, who, um, you know, was one of the main concerns about bringing new dogs in is having the time to do the introductions properly so with me there uh, i should be able to fast track that for them and and help uh, settle anything that uh, may arise so it's very exciting very exciting i'm really excited to uh, take chance up there and go on a bit of a road trip uh, i'm also very excited to see Nevaeh again uh, sit, check out a new home and see how she's going uh, but it will be really special to see the uh, Nevaeh and Chance reunite as well. And um, yeah, it's just, um, I couldn't be happier for him. It's a, it's a really special thing that, you know, not only has he come or gone, made the, the, the longest and, and most change within himself, he's, he's walked the longest road to get here. But to put the icing on the cake and 
you know, I just know the, how happy he's going to be and the life he's going to live. And when you remember that these guys were all going to be put down, you know, that was the end for them. Uh, at that point, you know, we had we had uh, a big road in front of us and I knew that, gee, I'm going to do my best, but this dog may, may be a difficult one, you know, this dog might, might never leave the farm. And so it is a very special uh, moment for me as well, just knowing just how tough Chance was, you know. Just how much he, I could see back then, he was just not suitable for any household environment. He, he was really um, very difficult to manage, highly aggressive, uh, with a lot of intent to cause maximum damage to the other animals. Uh, it was it was one of the most or the most serious case that uh, I've ever had to do a full rehab like this for and yeah I'm just so happy for him it's a it's a really special time and if only I could express how excited I was for you <laughs> hey hey mate you don't even know yet oh it's amazing it's amazing for the big boy oh yeah Good mate, good job. Hey, all this love that you've had to endure. Hey, finally paying off. Good job, buddy. Good job. Yeah, good boy. Good boy, man. Hey, you're going to see your new sister who was your bestie. Hey. Oh, good job, mate. Good job. Yeah, good boy. So yeah, real excited for him. Hello, yeah, good boy. I, uh, I did get a little bit emotional the other day when I was thinking about it, just because of, you know, I do really feel like it's a special thing. You know, he, he everyone had um, given up on him. His owners had abandoned him. He was in a very difficult scenario where it was just too hard basket for everyone involved and when he came here seeing just how you know intense the reactions were that I was working with um, it's hard to see him getting to this point back there you know it's, it's hard to see that light at the end of the tunnel when you're just like wow we've got a lot long way to go and I'd go far as to say he was the reason why we gave up daycare. Well, yeah, exactly. So dogs like this, that, like, what are we going to do? It, it, what, what are you, you going to do with him? You just Everyone else has turned their back. Um, we had to work with him when, and, you know, we couldn't let him down. Even though there were a lot of hard uh, parts about his rehab. Uh, he had a very deep, deep-seated desire to hurt other animals and other dogs, and he was serious about it. He didn't muck around. You know, he, he didn't just have a little disagreement with them. He, he was going, you know, for the jugular. And to see him now, these last couple of months, start to realise, hey, life's pretty good here if I just toe the line. You know, life's um, life's pretty free and easy and happy and full of love. Uh, but if I go down this other path, you know, life's sad. You know, I'm I'm, I'm isolated. I don't have much freedom. Um, you know, so I think that he definitely saw why we were putting in the time. He definitely saw what we were trying to give him and he made some serious changes. You know, he, he did make a lot of change early on, but he just had some demons to work through. You know, he, he had a lot of internal struggles with that innate drive to, you know, fight other dogs. <clears throat> and now he's turned into, um, you know, I wouldn't say a big marshmallow, <laughs> but as close as you could get to a big marshmallow, you know. He's a big marshmallow, uh, you know, up until 
someone someone uh, pushes his buttons a little bit too far. But uh, he's definitely he's definitely such a different dog, you know. And it's it's a it's a real proud moment I've got for him because I the way that I train them is by you know just putting it in front of them and you know but i can't make them decide i'm gonna make the effort i'm gonna try to you know make these changes i just create the relationship and express what i um, approve of and dis and don't approve of and it's up to them to want to keep on um, making those improvements within themselves because they are quite tough, you know. Like I've said it before that I can relate to all these dogs with my personal journey and so I, I know what he's going through. I know what he had to go through. It's a huge effort and it's a huge change and I just couldn't be happier for him. You know, this is that, this is that 12 months of blood, sweat and tears to this moment just going... You did it, mate. <laughs> Good job, eh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm proud of you, buddy. Good boy. Good boy, mate. Don't even know it yet, but we're going on a road trip, eh? We're going on a road trip. Don't even know yet. It's so exciting. It's so exciting, buddy. <laughs> yeah, good boy. Look at that smile. Eh? Good boy, mate. Good job. Yeah, good boy. <coughs> it's starting to get emotional. I've got to walk away. Okay. I'm so excited for him. Same. It's a pretty, it's a pretty special thing, really, that you know he's ended up here, and like you say, we've pretty much shut down our business to give him what he needs, and then finally, you know, he gets to live the fairy tale. You know, it's a, it makes it all worthwhile. 
when you when you see this, you know, fairy tale ending for him. Yeah. Because there are definitely some moments where we were like, are we doing the right thing? You know, are we crazy? And the short answer was, you know, we don't know if we're doing the right thing. Yep, we are crazy, but we just knew we had to give these dogs the time and energy and skill set that we have to give it the best shot and you know chances chances being one of the most difficult cases that we've dealt with and to see at the ending for him is just so awesome and it is it is a perfect scenario um in that you know it's not just the fact that um he gets a friend like Navea to spend the rest of his life with who was his best friend yeah. out of, you know, he hasn't had a, a relationship or friendship yeah. um, that came close to the one he had with yeah. Navea. But um, also the fact that um, this person that adopted Navea was a dog trainer herself. Yeah, for many years. And so she She's is more set. than qualified to to adopt a dog, you know, or yeah. dogs like mm. Nevaeh and Chance, and for her to be one of our members, yeah. you know, who's watching the videos, watching yeah, the no, whole yeah, journey. There's, there's no wool being pulled over anyone's no, eyes. No, she's seen it Chance, all. Chance is there for the viewing, you know. Yeah. And, and then she's come forward for yeah. Nevaeh, um, and then contacted us to say, what do you think about yeah. Chance joining us up here? We're having so much fun. You know, yeah. yeah, it was it was good to hear her feedback that Navea was just such a well balanced, happy, um, you know, well behaved dog, and that she thought that she could potentially take on her old roommate as well, which initially, before we got to this point in in their journey. No way would we ever expect that the one person would take two of these dogs. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like we, we were sitting there going, okay, we need to find a very special person to take one, and we've got four of them to do. Um, but then to, to get to the point where they're so happy with how Nevaeh is that, you know, they think that, we'll cope, that she's very well capable of taking on chance as well. And I've spoken to her and, and spoken over a few things and, um, you know, spoke about how Nevaeh is going and, and what she's doing, all that kind of stuff. And it just sounds like she's well and truly on top of it. Nevaeh is having the best time, wants for nothing. Uh, and, you know, it sounds like the, the perfect scenario. And uh, I just, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm really excited for him. And I suppose it's a it's a big it's a big um, affirmation for us that we did the right thing. You know, we we got chose this path, and and this is what it's all about: is giving these guys a second chance at life and putting them in the best possible uh, position to make that second chance last forever. You know, mm. so it's pretty exciting. Pretty, uh, pretty happy for him. <laughs> hey, mate. Yeah, buddy. Even, even just, I remember thinking and talking to you. You know, even as far as six months ago. Mm. And I remember you saying, "Do you think he's ever going to be able to be out in a group like this?" You know, because. Mm. Although he performed very highly, like he could have gone to an owner that didn't have any kids and, well, no, he's all right with kids, but he was just real, like a, he's a bulldog, so he knocks him over. But he could have gone to an owner that didn't have any other dogs and just he was the one dog in the family. Um, and that would have been okay, but you still couldn't have taken him to dog parks. You still couldn't have taken him to off-lead recreational areas like they were big restrictions that he had over his head based mm. on his behavior and it's just really cool to see that 
those restrictions are obsolete now. You know, in the right hands, he can live a completely normal, happy social life. Um, yeah, that, just like that, Nevaeh. Yeah, that's that's what uh, I think is the, the special part about it. Where you know, he's he's gonna have an awesome life. Mm. He's he's just gonna love it. He's gonna get. Um, all the attention and love and affection that he needs. He's gonna have the freedom to run around. He's gonna have a buddy to go run around with, mate. Oh, yeah. We'll see if he wants to get in the dam by himself or not. <laughs> but even those early days when we first paired them up and they became really good friends, and when we used to let them go in the playground together, how they just run off and you know, frolic through the grass, <laughs> thinking that was uh, having a great time. Yeah. You know, we're free. Woo! Let's go. And so the, it's really special. I'm just picturing that with them doing that on their own on their own property and having a blast. So yeah. And they've and um, Nevaeh's owner has a Facebook page and a YouTube channel for Nevaeh. Yeah. For Nevaeh. So obviously, you know, there's going to be Chancy Boy. Chance. Yeah. <laughs> So we can all cool. watch along, yeah. you know, and see him living his wonderful life. Yeah. Which will be cool. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, pretty exciting. Yeah, I think it's pretty special. Good boy. <laughs> You know how Maggie uh, doesn't take too kindly to any negativity towards her, you know, stands her ground and says, I ain't going to cop this, you know. Yeah. Uh, while we are doing the baths this morning, it was the first time that Abra had been put in with the rest of the group while I wasn't there because I was outside with the... Um, getting the dogs for the bath and looking after Wolfie and so I was just assessing how that was all going to go down mm. and I'm not sure exactly how it initiated but Abra um, did a little snappy tom thing that she does to Maggie and I thought oh here we go <laughs> you know this is uh, this will be interesting so Maggie did the thing that she always does and straight away went, I'm not taking this, you know, <laughs> Cur curled her lip and air snapped back at um, Abra to say, hey, don't do that to me. And Abra went, let's go. Oh no. Yeah. Maggie went, I'm out. Oh wow. That yeah. doesn't usually happen to Maggie. Never. Jeez. Nah, Abra just went, oh yeah, you want to play my game? Let's go and just you know, didn't didn't like fully oh. have a fight or anything, but just went, yep, let's do it. And Maggie just straight away went, oh, you're a little bit more serious than uh, I was anticipating. No, she's usually like, um, my bluff works. Yeah, generally. I like a standoff. Yeah. I like to stand tall and show you that I'm tough. I curl my lid. Yeah, exactly. And I stand in front of you and I say, give you the crazy eyes. Yeah. Cause that usually gets everybody. Uh, Abra you know? just didn't even hesitate. And uh. Maggie just went, oh, 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 too much, I'm out. Yeah, right. And so I remember thinking, cause I was on my way in, cause I knew that something was about to go down. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, well, we're not dealing with your average Joe here with Abra. Nah. She's definitely not your average puppy. No, no way. Uh, what about before when I was like, yeah, good girl, and I turned around and walked away and she jumped up and went, whack. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then again on the arm. Like, but this is the thing. Like, we joke about it and we make light of it. But it is very serious. It is very serious. No, is, but it is, it just is. for everybody at home, though, I think it is just generally, I do think that this is a bit our personalities. We We try to... When times get serious or times get down, we've, we've always tried to make light of it. Yeah. Because otherwise... Otherwise um, you just cry. 
Yeah. It's just and there's hard. been times where there's been a few things going on and it would just feel too overwhelming. Yeah. Um, so not that this is overwhelming or too much or anything like that. But that's, like but that. that's just how we But cope. it's just our personality yeah. um, and what we, our relationship, isn't it? You yeah. know, like when it's something that's a bit, oh gee, yeah, that's a bit serious. And so we kind of just um, have a joke about it to get through. So... Um, yeah. Because really, the underlying thing with Abra is um, she's actually going to be a lot of work. Oh, so much. And so, um, much so, and even even to the point where, even though she's mouthy, and you know, I'd even go as far as say that what she's doing isn't mouthing; it's proper biting. Because I was even said to you, I was like, like she's proper clamping and everything. Mm. Like when she jumps up and bites my clothes, and she's playing. But she is pressing down with those mm. teeth, you know. Like I can wrestle with Roscoe and he jumps up and bites and chews my arm, but it's soft. Like he knows it's my arm. He doesn't want to cause damage. Uh, she just instinctively is like, bang. You know, wants to go and go hard. Doesn't muck around. Um, her play is very serious. There's a lot of red flags as far as her behavior and you know that's why when i was talking about chance he's like he's the end of his road he's moving on to his next life and it's going to be amazing and then i look over at her and go you've got so far to go mm. <laughs> you know you've got a long way look at this guy he's yeah. he's about to post out <laughs> post out to his new life and you're still in recruit school mm. right, right at the beginning of her journey mm. So, so we have a we have an appointment this afternoon actually talking about this. I've reached out to a, a guy that runs a company down in Western Sydney, and he does uh, he works with protection dogs, trains dogs up for the police for um, you know private security. Uh, that's what he does. It's his specialisation. So I have booked a consult with him to talk about Abra and to go over a few things. I. You know, I do have a few mates that do bite work. However, I am going to be asking some specific questions and uh, I would like, you know, uh, going going to him and paying for this consult to get his expertise and get his He's got four, 40 years experience and he, is, right. he is the best. Yeah, so, um, so, you know, that kind of experience is just invaluable like you having giving him the situation giving him the bloodlines and and just sort of getting his perspective on what you should shouldn't can uh do all of the above what are options pick are his, pick his brain mm. um, because there are a lot of different ways to do the bite work there's a lot of reasons to do different types of bite work uh, what the objectives are and it may like I'd be very interested to hear his advice you know and so that's why we but even just generally with. like um, he trains dogs as protection dogs yep. and for the police force mm -hmm. so um, you know a lot of people have asked in comments about well um, I'm sure that the police would love a dog like Abra or can you not reach out to you know yeah. and so he's the guy that um, you know to get yeah. to I, ask I, I already do know or semi know the answer to that question and you know those government organizations don't get dogs like this yeah they have breeding programs they have you know, maybe so in that. so just just on that maybe in other countries they do it differently yeah um so because a lot of our audience is um an international mm. audience but here in australia um you know yeah it, it is a specific thing that uh, it's also something that when they go into their programs, they like to have already done quite a, quite a bit of that kind of work by the time she's this age. Mm. If you remember when we spoke about her exposure period, 
where they expose them to things. Or I talk about exposing the dogs to buses and motorbikes and busy streets and kids and school zones where at three o'clock when the kids are all out, you know, that kind of thing where if it's an intense environment at that young age, they can take that on, observe it, look at you and see you're not concerned about this. And so they just take it with a grain of salt and say, this is no threat. You're not scared, so I, I won't be scared of this environment. Um, I know that on the military side of things, that exposure period is all to do with um, getting into battle and making sure that there's no part of going into battle that's going to intimidate them and, and take a backward step. So it is a very important thing that they have that exposure training to explosives, gunshots, uh, screeching tires when cars are coming in to do fast entries. Uh, there, there are so many things that you don't get exposed to in civilian life that military dogs and police dogs need to be exposed to. Uh, it's the same with the police horses, you know, when there's riots and when there's thousands of people on the street, those horses need to just be like, yep, I'm not intimidated by this and I'm going to keep charging through, you know. Uh, it's the same with the dogs. The, the dogs need to just go, yep, you're my target. I don't care if you've got a knife in your hand or a bat, I'm, I'm, I'm going for you, you know. So you can't, you can't, or well, you shouldn't be able to punk these dogs that are in those roles. And what I mean by that is, like, I do it to my dogs for fun, for a game and play, you know, and I, like, do it. Tilly's a really good example where she'll come up and want to nip my heels and I'll turn around and pretend to go for her and then she quickly runs away and comes around another angle. Uh, that's where, in these scenarios, I've only got two dogs that you can't punk, and that's Fredo and Roscoe. As soon as I do it, they're like, yeah, let's go, bang, you know, and they, they're hungry for it. But that's the same with these organisations. If you can intimidate the dog, or if there is a weakness in their personality or confidence, the dogs will fail. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't want them, they won't go into service. So that kind of training, I know she's already missed out on for her age, so I'm almost certain uh, she's not fit to go into that line of, uh, of work based on the fact that she's already too late um, for those organizations she's already too old but we it's are but we say... are speaking we are speaking to a professional today yeah, so he you've, might, you've he might also have another area like private security where they mm. might, might deal with it because it's just a smaller organization but the big government ones i know they've got their own programs and yeah breeding programs breeding everything programs, training programs the um, dogs come from eight weeks old you know they are yeah. in training from a very young age and they're id so abra's brothers and sisters they might have got the whole litter and maybe two other litters at the same time and they've got 30 dogs in a program at the end of that program five dogs will pass and become service dogs yeah you know that's the kind of uh, mm. ratio that we're talking about because they are looking for specific traits to be maximum effective at their job mm. and that's the kind of hit and miss rate there is there might be that so this so um who you're talking to, yep. he, he also qualifies the dogs Correct. Um, as to whether she has that drive or yeah. not. So I've got a few questions that I want to ask specifically about Abra and then also specifically about Roscoe. And, you know, the next stage, he, he might just say, go down this path, don't, don't go down this path, or it's probable that the next stage will be, yep, let's come and do an assessment. We'll do a two-hour assessment with the dogs and then I'll be able to tell you, you know, this is what I expect this dog could achieve. This, I don't think the dog's got the drive. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this dog, it's perfect for this dog. You know, who knows? Uh, and that's when, that's when uh, we can go down and book a face-to-face. A -face. Uh, one of the big questions is gonna be around the fact that she comes from a breeding bloodline for protection dogs. Uh, so breaking that tradition and breaking that um, that breed to go into a normal civilian life is that something that he's ever experienced is that something that he feels is um, achievable for a dog of her um, breeding you know these are all the questions that I want to bounce off a professional who's been in the business for many many years and so it will be interesting to hear what he says um, I know that 
with Roscoe, it's all a big game. And, yeah. And, you know, he's just doing it for fun. And so anything that you were to do with him um, would be for fun. That's right. Um, it's just Abra is different. Yeah. Uh, originally, I was going to get a sleeve, and I anticipate that when the sleeve comes out, Roscoe is just going to get super excited and go, I've seen this before. <laughs> Whack, and come up and bite it. Um, and so then that would probably just be a, a game that we play with and use to, to bond with and that kind of thing. Um, but I know after speaking with a couple of my mates, there's that way that you can go down just for fun and create a bond and, and build a relationship. And it's just something that you both share together versus the real protection dogs. Um, you know, you, you, you're driving off a different a different mindset um that we've always been of the philosophy or the belief that um we we're not looking to deny the dogs like their inherent their drive, uh, yeah. you know um instincts instincts like for instance you know tilly and joey you know we just redirect those um you know instincts to things that are more acceptable yeah if that you know and so a dog like abra um if it is assessed that you know those instincts are um ingrained and you know there is no use in trying to train it out of her then our best bet is to redirect those instincts, just like we have with Tilly and Joey, um, into activities that she will still feel satisfied with, but she will understand the boundaries of yeah. when we're allowed to do it and what we're allowed to do it to. Well, that's exactly what we're doing, but yeah. So yeah, the whole, the whole purpose of investigating and the whole reasoning behind me inquiring and and making this appointment is around the fact that uh, you know we've always been of the opinion that we don't want to train dogs not to do something that they have been bred to do and it's part of their instincts we want to uh, so basically we don't want them to feel like there's something missing in their life. You mm. know? And so anytime that we have one of those dogs that has that trait that we know is an inherent um, part of them, then we just redirect their energy and put it towards something that isn't detrimental to themselves or to any other dogs or any people. And it's one of those things where we want them to be completely satisfied and content and well balanced and wholesome and uh, we try to give them everything they need in accordance with you know what what those traits and, and instincts are so I suppose the reason why we're getting into this now is because if we go down the path that I usually do which is um, you know no biting full stop but then we're dealing with a dog that that is the one and only thing that these dogs are, you know, chosen for mm. is that protective instinct to um, go to war for their owner. Is it going to raise some issues later on if we don't have that vice for them? Which is why if we could turn that trait and that behaviour into a game where they get that satisfaction of attacking a bite suit or a bite sleeve, uh, is that going to then help with their overall balance? Is that going to help with their uh, mindset and their, their piece of existence? So it's that's the main reason why we're investigating this. Because usually it's a herding instinct, you know, or it's a, it's a prey drive or it's a whatever. With this, it's different. With this, you know, if you're... So Fredo and Roscoe, they have the protection protection instincts. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we've given them jobs and boundaries. Yeah, so Fredo's, Fredo's version of protection and uh, Roscoe's version of protection are two different things. 
but they're satisfied with their jobs. Uh, I, you know, am, am fully aware of how to achieve a similar result with her, but my main, um, my main question and concern is around the fact that like Rottweilers and, you know, Mastiffs and all, all sorts of other breeds have a number of character traits, you know, friendly, lovable, protection, blah, 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 blah. And there's all those other things. So there's many different things that you can get. But if you look up Belgian Malinois, there's just one word, protection. You know, that's, that's what they do. They do protection. Um, Dutch Shepherds, there's some herding back there in the bloodlines and that kind of thing, but yeah. But, uh, but in saying that, we, we, we've had lots and lots of crossbreeds. Absolutely. But um, we do find that there are certain dogs who are crossbreeds that are um, present 100% of yeah. one breed. They do. And they, I'm sure they, there's going to be a lot of people at home that go, oh, I've got a dog like yeah. that. I've got you a know. beagle cross, whatever, but they are all beagle. Or you know? we've, we've yeah, had we've exactly had, that scenario. Yeah. Um, so you know, we're, no, we're no stranger to it, but... All I'm doing is wanting a professional's advice on if this dog is just has the drive and has the all these things that would make it a perfect protection dog and we remove that from their life, is it going to be detrimental to the mindset and, uh, yeah. you know, the rest of the behavior for this dog so, so it, that's why we're so investigating it, like that. every dog that comes to the farm it, it really is a, we're trying to investigate as to what is the best thing yeah. for this dog in particular mm -hmm. um, just like we're trying to do the same thing with diesel yeah. um, with investigating medical, with his medical you know we don't want to be um, trying to train something that is not a medical reason for it's a yeah um, so we're, we're, we're just doing our due diligence and uh, I feel like for this kind of thing uh, I would value a, a professional's advice on uh, exactly what his thoughts are. It seems no one likes a suck up. <laughs> nah, it's weakness. Yeah. It's weird isn't it? Mm. In the in the canine world. Yeah. Um, but it's not so much a suck up. It is. We're just there's we're referring up, to there's a suck there's up a, that doesn't get the hint. There's a there's a dog in particular, and his name's Tanky, yeah. <laughs> and he gets he, he gets, gets a, on a bit. he he loves everybody. Like, but he's like Miss Violet. Yeah, but I'm just gonna say, like on the on the outside, it looks like all he's doing is loving on everybody, mm. but everyone picks on him. Like everyone this tells is, him this is, this is to. He just hassles Bu consistent. Buzz off. He's and he's like, very... I love, I love you so much. He's very persistent. So much. Yeah. With but his I'm, love. But I'm sure you'd give me a big Oof. stiff arm as well, babe, Oof. if I just walked around kissing your cheek and saying, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Like, just come on, we got work to do. Leave me alone. That's what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't get it. Yeah. You know, he's too intense with the, with the love. With the love. Because he'll even... The staffies do it as well, um, but they, they get the hint. Whereas Miss Violet, you know, she's a bit slow to slow on the uptake, and so so Ab Abra definitely focuses on Diesel. Yeah, that might not end too well for her. Mm. I wonder if Diesel reminds her of her parents. I think it's more that she thinks he's unstable. Could be. Could just be reading the energy and he's getting, you know, wound up. And she's like, what are we doing? And like, what are we getting wound up for? And feeding off it, but... Well... Um, she doesn't go for him. Shadow, um... Her... All her spidey senses go a bit funny with, um, Diesel. You know, it goes back to the old days That's of, you know, yeah. a dog like that used to heighten her, yeah. you know. Anyway. Yeah, interest. 
Yeah. So I suppose in summary, uh, we are investigating all the you know sources of information and avenues we can to find out the best case scenario for for Abra. I've already spoken to a couple of my mates who are ex-military uh, canine handlers for you know very serious Belgian Malinois and German Shepherd. Um, they're not really protection dogs, but they are military attack dogs, war dogs. Yeah, and you know I've got their perspective on things and the way they do things. And then I also wanted to investigate and and get the opinion of. Uh, someone who trains working dogs for a whole heap of different tasks and jobs, uh, not just one one direction. Not so, just the military. Yeah, not just the military side of things. So, you know, it it will be... He does police and... Yeah, he does police, he does private security, he does private protection, he does uh, scent work, he does, you know, general yeah. obedience, he does it all. Um, so, so Abra's parents would have come from a guy like him. Correct, yeah. Abra's parents have gone through a protection training program and they have been successful and have gone out to uh, a private citizen for whatever Domestic reason. violence. Was it domestic violence yeah. that she felt she needed these dogs? And then she's backyard bred them and you know, they've ended up here. So. Well, I, th I don't know what her intentions were, but when the dad killed one of the puppies she felt in over her head yeah she's been off more than she can chew so uh now um yeah i just want to uh, to point out that yes i'm very excited about you know investigating this further we are trying to investigate everything within our uh, power and and reach to get the best advice and we'll we'll take all that in and decide what to do with her from there. So, um, yeah, it's exciting. I'm excited to have a chat and work out where to go from from here for, for Abra. Whoa. <laughs> I'm also really excited about Diesel's involvement. Yeah. Like he he um he just sat there the whole time that we spoke then. Yeah, it didn't run off. No. Abra. Abra. So once we get the Abra. blood the blood tests back for diesel. Good girl. Good girl. So once we get the blood test back for Diesel, yep. um, we're going to then plan some kind of like program for him yeah. whilst he's here. He is up for adoption, um, so the shelter's going to advertise him yeah. um, this week. But like all the other dogs, um, they're always up for adoption. But, yeah. you know, for whatever time they are here, we try to make the most of their time. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, but for a dog like Diesel, because he came here and he was so wound up and he really was presenting some very odd behaviours, yeah. we obviously went straight to let's just um, make sure that there is no medical underlying issues mm -hmm. where we should be helping him, yeah. you know, um with that yeah uh but once that's been eliminated then it's going to be a matter of um how do we best help diesel while he's here oh goodness Strugg um, he's struggling with all the intense activities uh, with confined uh, areas so you know any time that the dogs are fully and in an excited and intense state, he he struggles with, and that's where he shows a lot of his herding instinct. And when the, you know, in the herding world, if the flock aren't doing what he wants them to do, then he increases the intensity to get them moving, uh, and and that's what he's starting to do, bringing that instinct in with some of the other dogs, and that's why he needs to be managed in those scenarios. 
he struggles to to be an integral part of those activities and he more so is focusing on putting the other dogs off or interrupting the flow of those activities so it's nothing unusual no, it, it's very common it's the same it it yeah. happens to all the dogs that come we through the farm the same problem with new daycare dogs yeah you know, they come through like oh yeah no they haven't seen this for the first time not allowed to do this and it would be a guiding process uh, so it's not uncommon it's very normal we are we are well aware of it and so we just manage the situations and so for him you know he can come out on these walks where we're quite calm and you know it's very social and he's getting a lot out of it and then when it comes to those other activities uh, he does need to be managed and he needs to he, he needs to um, you know have a little bit more undivided attention rather than divided attention which is you know where where we need to manage the situation and isolate him for some of these activities you know the, bi the biggest one for him would be the lure it's way too intense for him he can't process it the dogs get to the nth degree excited and he just loses his mind a little bit with it and so um, <clears throat> you know gets caught up in the hype and doesn't know how to process it and so you've got to build up to those things. That's right. They're they're one of the really intense ones, and even in our pack, we've even got a couple of like dogs the pool there. session is the same. You know, when the lure comes out, That's toys right. come out. He, you know, he runs back and forth barking at the dogs because they're all excited barking at the the lure and waiting for it to go. Um, you know, the motorbike he was pretty intense for, but he's desensitised to that a bit now, and. You know, it's just one of those things that's a natural process for a dog like him. You know, he needs to build up to those things. You can't just throw him in the deep end and... You, you could go so far okay. as to say, though, that it's a natural process for any dog um, that Absolutely. comes here. Yeah. Like, um, if we Abra, were... We don't we don't put Abra in with the lure yet. You know, she... She's, she's been training now to... Um, to like place trained be beside you for those mm. intense moments. That's right. Um, uh, so because I need to, I need to manage her behaviour in those scenarios. And Joey's Joey's a working dog, yeah. and she still I, um, every now and again I have to pull her out because she gets a yeah. bit too intense. So same thing, I have to bring her and put her in a, a sit or a drop next to me to take her out of the game because you know she she likes to. Do the Very same thing as, as diesel. diesel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, gets right in there, um, but it can be a bit too too much. So it's not one of those. It's not a concerning um, thing. Like I just I just wanted to uh, manage everyone's expectations on it because yeah. I do notice that some people it's, just he, are he, like, what? Yeah, why like, isn't so and so there? Or where is so and so? And it's not. Um, <laughs> it's not. It like. It's not anything that's specifically you know to do with this one dog it is across the board yeah it's know? just the it is the normal process um barney's been there yeah, barney's been um there. He, you know he, he got removed recently actually uh because he just was yeah it's and and the too too riled up like he came to us at six months old unsocialized because of mm. um, all of his hospitalization um, and so you know this is like the lasting effects of it um, isn't it you know it is. when and they don't get that early socialization these intense scenarios are misread become very difficult to deal to with process the... so um, like Tang, even Tang and Chopper were the same even hope yeah, you know, yeah, um, she's she's now got to a point where it's few and m more few and far between. Yeah. Um, and so when they get to that point, then they can be involved the yeah, whole time and usually, guided. Yeah, usually for her, the process is the intensity revs up, but then I focus on her and let her know that I'm watching her. And yeah. so it makes her tread on eggshells a little bit. Yeah. And that's when, shadow. Get, that's when they get the reward. Oh, yeah, Shadow was... Chance, they've obviously. They've all been through it. Ross, yeah, I know. Through. I'm just... This is what, I suppose, what we're trying to express here. But it's is, not like people it's not are... a unique case. They're not... It's normal. Discover or like... Um, 
revealing some, yeah. you know, unique scenario. It's just it's a part normal. of the normal process, yeah. um, the really intense situations. But on top of that, which we've explained previously with Chance's journey, because it was so drawn out, um, obviously when you're, when you're, attention is removed that's another situation where they need to be managed depending on their level of that's training right. so that's what i was saying before about divided attention yeah so if i'm solely focused on that one dog that's undivided attention and i can give that dog everything it needs at that very moment but in those some of those scenarios i am managing quite a number of dogs that's right so there's ongoing progress that needs to be given at all to, different levels uh, a, a much larger number of dogs and when they're at such an early stage it's just a lot safer for everyone involved that uh, i remove him at this point because i've just got so many other things going on with all the other issues with the other dogs um, so even though abra is only very new um she is obviously very advanced in her response. She just picks it up very quickly. So yeah. you have been able to talk to train her yeah. um, to to stay in in that place in those intense situations. Mm. But I've got to say, whilst we can see that her bite drive is serious, her teeth are so little that even if um, she were to have an incident in those intense situations, it's not as damaging as a dog like Diesel. Yeah, the ri the risk is less, but on the other side of the thing of the coin is the fact that the priority really is prevention rather than cure. Now, Diesel's already got a few years under his belt, and you know he he's not showing real aggression to mm, anyone no no he's you know, not he, yeah he is just got a strong herding herding yep. instinct yeah just like joey that's right whereas abra is very different she's very young she's very impressionable she's at a time where we need to act now otherwise you leave it and it gets a lot worse and she'll be way worse than any of these other dogs um yeah behaviors if we allow it so priority really is to focus on her and eliminate any of those behaviors developing and setting in so yeah it's a totally different kettle of fish diesel's got plenty of uh time to learn these lessons slowly he also um he's very adoptable yeah you know like whilst whilst we're trying to um give him like all that we can offer while he's here at the farm. Yeah. Um, he can't. He, he, he can. He can go out the door this afternoon and be fine and live a wonderful yeah. life. Yeah, and like I mean, all majority of what has happened here at the farm okay. is is uh, decompression yeah. and um, and then obviously the socialisation once socialization, he has routine, bit of basic training. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's just allowing him to come out of his shell and mm. show us who he really is and just let go of anything and become the dog that he's meant to be. Uh, whereas, yeah, Abra, Abra is definitely... She's a concern a going out into the oh, just, world, yeah. You couldn't, but, couldn't, couldn't do it. Yeah, and every, every dog that comes here is so different, yeah. you know, like... We are just trying to do the best we can for each and every dog that comes through the farm, yeah. you know. But um, yeah, like yeah. all these interactions there, look oh, at him. Boy. Look at that. That's the first good time boy. that's ever happened. Good boy, mate. I was just about to say, like, he's learning so much from this. <laughs> what a good, good boy, job. Diesel. And Roscoe is very playful. Uh, just maybe Abra needs to stay out of it. <laughs> That is the first time he's played. That is the first time. <laughs> How exciting. Yeah, good. Goodness, it's like he was right on cue as well. <laughs> like that's a massive milestone for Diesel. What a good boy you are, Roscoe. 
you're such a good boy. Let me, let me just decode what's happened there. Yeah. And, um, Maybe Ab Abra, though. <laughs> she doesn't have the same skills yeah, there's, as... There's been a few... There's been a few times... Um, I've been asked with a question about Roscoe and his vocalisation and what he's doing. Um, now... Roscoe was showing all the body language. Hang on, I'll just show him with Freddie too, because obviously Freddie loves Roscoe. Yeah. Roscoe was showing all the body language of, um, hey, I'm tough and I'm in charge, you know, and I was, I was watching very intently because Lily, it's all right, let him play. <laughs> um, yeah, I was watching good girl, darling. Uh, I was watching very intently because if uh, Diesel didn't give the signs that he gave, uh, that could have escalated pretty quickly. So I was waiting to see what, how it all unfolded to see what I do from there. And if you notice that Roscoe was standing strong and he was standing over the top and he was saying, you know, giving that body language and posture of re recognize my position, you know, and straight away, Diesel sniffed him out, had a sniff, looked around and just went, dropped to the ground, you know? Didn't drop to the ground in submit, but dropped to the ground in acknowledgement. Yep, you're the boss, no problem. Uh, where do we go from here? And instantly, Roscoe softened and went, we play, <laughs> let's go, you know? And yeah. so there was already that understanding of, yep, I know your position. Yep, I'm not challenging your position. Sweet, let's have a bit of a zoomy play. And that's what Roscoe is asking of the other dogs, i.e. when you see the tanks, mm. the Barneys, the, all these other interactions where Barney refuses to acknowledge. It's a good example, actually. And yeah. then on the other spectrum, Rover is like Diesel. That's right. Rover just goes, yeah, cool, I'm not challenging you. Yeah, let's play. Yeah, let's, let's and play. So and so they do. And so they play. Yeah. Uh, Lily, Lily. <laughs> Lily just told Roscoe. Yeah. Now Rover's coming in. Yeah, yeah, let's play. Let's play. I love you, Roscoe. Oh, yeah. Chance has just been the good boy. Yeah. So it's it's a it's an interesting dynamic, and it all depends on how the dogs receive it versus what they receive back. <laughs> it's a uh, Roscoe's Roscoe took a little bit to figure out back when he was doing his rehab and that's that moment where you know he would look at you through the fence and give you the side eyes and be very vocal and growling and all the rest of it but I remember when you get him out of the cage and you do your training with him and he looks at you and gives that look and you're like what is he thinking in that head, you know? Because it's pretty intimidating. But then the body language gives him away where he just wants to play. He wants to, you know, <laughs> he wants to get that respect, but then he just wants to... Not all the body language gives it away, though. Like, he really, well, no. he hides it to the majority of us. Like, Well, that's what I mean. Like, I, yeah. could, I, could, I could pick it. Yeah. And so I just had to trust that, you know, his body wasn't lying, <laughs> you know, because... I remember even um, Jason used to be like. Oh, Jason was like, I don't. Of all of them, yeah. I don't trust that guy. <laughs> yeah. But he gave nothing. Yeah. He gave nothing. But it, it, all the first time I saw it was just like a little, a little spring in his step. But then he'd just straight into a big chest, you know, standing strong. And I'm like, oh, you, you want to? Look at Lil. It's like you guys have been. It's too much. Oh, oh, Joey. Hello, buddy. Oh, I think it was a, it was at a distance, but. Yeah. Oh, Lily. Lily. Up, Lily come flying in. <laughs> but I must say, I do love seeing Lily, like so confident. Yeah. Don't you reckon? Yeah. You know, and really valuing like her her place in the pack. Yeah. Sorry, Joey. It's funny though, because she came from, you know, very intimidated and nervous and unsure to, you know, top ranking. She skipped all the middle ranks. 
She has, hasn't she? And just ran. You know what? I feel like maybe she's above Roscoe and Freddo. I feel like she feels like it, right? <laughs> yeah, she, she does. But it's it's similar. It's similar because she she has the same mindset as Roscoe. Not Freddo. He's different. But she has the same mindset as Roscoe, where in her mind, nobody else matters but me. Mm. And so it's me and her mm. versus the pack. Mm. And for Roscoe, he's the same. It's mm. me and him versus the pack. Mm. You know, and then uh, they have their own interactions individually. But then my relationship with them is is their most important. Fredo, not so much. <laughs> You're a bit different. But uh, I think that's where that's where off camera. It's, it's Fre almost... Fredo uh, just wishes it was mum and him. Oh, 100 percent. And this guy was yeah, not <laughs> not out of any other thing. But it's like oh, no mum's pushover. I can just do what I want. With mom. She doesn't make me do anything. Oh, she's mum. Yeah, so I definitely. Well, see that was what pretty saying. special, though, wasn't that it? That was awesome. D for Diesel. Yeah. It's yeah, exactly really what we've cool. been. We were just talking about in yeah. terms of. This is where we haven't been pushing him. Is. We've yeah. been, you know, giving him his time, but we knew that these bushwalks, because we've been doing extended bushwalks, yeah. and just we knew it was a benefit to him. Absolutely. And then he does that, and that's that's massive. That, that will be so valuable to him now. Yeah. That that not only. Has he just begun a relationship with Roscoe, but he's just learnt, you know, that this can be fun, not mm. all serious, you know, and he's starting to branch out and discover those relationships. Because mm. really, he was in a place really where um, he was in with dingoes and it was just negative relationships. They yeah. just kept attacking him. Yeah. So for him to have a positive interaction yeah, like that really, really good. is very good. And that's where we could see his progress and that's where we could see his development. So that's why we just, that's, that's why we've been doing these bushwalks yeah. so often and for so long is really for his benefit to get out and be involved in it. Because when we do the other things, he's not quite ready for those scenarios. But mm. what's going on here? We've got one, two, three <laughs> dogs chewing these, these spindles. <laughs> look, at, look at Maggie over there. Abra, like, you see how she runs? Um, um, yeah, um, no. um, um. She just runs like a snapping turtle. Land shark. Land shark, yeah, sorry. Obviously, I have to stop the exercise, go get her and bring her back. And I could see she sat here and looked like, uh, you know, I'm going to avoid you because I know I've done the wrong thing. And then in, it, within a, a split second went to, no, I'm not going to run. 
and then within another split second just went, I'll just come to you. And so there was no correction there at all. It was all praise because I saw her process and what she chose and just rewarded her for that decision and then just walked her back and put her in there. So again, very unique situation with this dog. She's very intelligent, processes things very quickly and ultimately chose the right decision and just got all love for it. So there wasn't even a correction, but just the fact that I'd stopped the exercise and then was walking after her, was enough for her to realize, oh, okay, I've done something um, that I shouldn't have done here. What, how do I deal with this? And then came straight to me with the body language of, well, yeah, I realize um, you know, I've, I've done something out of, or what I should have. And it's a, I just wanted to point it out because it's, yeah, to me as a trainer, it's very impressive that she's got that mental uh, capability and. Uh, she's actually processing and using it and, and uh, she's so young. Mm.